What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. When looking at aspects of a coaster that make it a good coaster, what things would you say make it so? Airtime, laterals, pacing, all potentially great parts of a good ride, but what about smoothness? Arguably some of the best coasters out there are the smooth ones, yet there's some enthusiasts out there, myself included, that would sometimes argue the roughness of a coaster makes it all the better, weird as that sounds. Example, X2. That being said, there's just some attractions out there that I'm sure we can all agree on are just plain bad, and perhaps worst of these is one that I'm bringing you today with, you guessed it, a knockoff of a knockoff of a Vacoma SLC. Like, you thought Green Lantern hurt or Magnus Colossus had bad pacing? Wait till you see this thing. Not only that, parts of this ride were reprofiled, redone, reopened, everything, and they ended up even worse than they were in the first place. Valleying trains were more common than successful test runs as well, and overall the project was just a major disaster. So before I say any more, and I do have to give credit where credit is due, this was actually suggested on the official National Coasters Discord server, which we actually just released last week. So if you want to join that and get context on bizarre and weird coasters and stuff before they're released, you can go ahead and join that and I'll leave a link down below. Especially for those of you that are on Discord all the time, it'd be fun to get to meet with you guys and hang out a little bit. With that said, no more talk. Now is the time you've all been waiting for. This is the story of Century Amusement Park's suspended looping coaster over water. Opening on July 24th, 2014, suspended looping coaster over water, designed by Hebei Zhongye Metallurgical Equipment Manufacturing Company, was a knockoff Vacoma SLC resembling layouts similar to other knockoff manufacturers that would operate up until 2020. During its operational lifespan, the coaster would see a few changes in its design and creation, first starting with the construction of the ride itself. But before that, we need to start at the source, Hebei Jonya Metallurgical Equipment. And quick disclaimer too, the footage in today's video is actually of the original model at Jingling Happy World, as no footage of suspended looping coaster over water was available. But both are in fact the same, hence the reason I'm showing you footage of it. Anyways, Hebei Jongye, the company that built it, was founded in 1974 with 113 coasters built to date and has been one of the leading Chinese corporations even outside of coasters for the past several years. Starting out with small rides, they were actually one of the first Chinese manufacturers to advance to the extreme coasters category before actually being the first to build a coaster outside of China itself. However, as the company evolved, so did their ability to recreate things and as of today, roughly 80% of their coasters are considered to be not original. And of these 80% came two inverts in the form of a model type dubbed the Seven Ring Suspended Looping Coaster, which itself was a knockoff of another knockoff brought to the community by Beijing Shibolai Amusement Equipment. Beijing Shibolai came up with what is known today as the Suspended Looping Coaster version 1, and is what Hebei Zhongye based theirs off of, hence the knockoff of a knockoff title. Well, obviously Hebei Zhongye wasn't nearly as successful with it, seeing as only two were built, but regardless, here's what happened with their latest installation, Suspended Looping Coaster Over Water. Suspended Looping Coaster Over Water opened as I mentioned on July 24th, 2014, but even two weeks before that when initial testing began, saw immediate problems, starting with valleying trains. And this wasn't just one or two runs that had to happen, it was every other one, and consistently too. This was a direct result of the materials they used in the wheels, as friction proved to be much more prevalent on this coaster than some of their other models. Well, of course this was a new challenge because the seven ring installation before it was clearing the element as you can see here, even though it was extremely slow, so it didn't make any sense why this one wasn't. Anyways, the quick solution to this was obviously to do some reprofiling, and that's exactly what they did, starting with the cause of the problem, the Immelman inversion. But here's where things went wrong. To save time, Hebei Zhongye decided instead of producing new sections of track at their facilities, they would just cut out about 5 feet of track from the pre-existing Immelman and weld it together. So, they did that, and well, want to see the results? <laughs> yeah, that's not even photoshopped. That's what happens when you remove track and combine pre-existing sections together. Not pretty. And it rode just as bad as it looks. Though the trains were now clearing the layout, riders were subject to extreme headbanging, plus the constant disassembly and reassembly of the trains, which made them even weaker and subject to more pain. Basically, it was just a disaster. Somehow though, it was allowed to keep operating, and for the next two years, it would operate on and off with very minimal ridership. In fact, there were some months it just remained closed indefinitely. And as if that wasn't bad enough, by 2019 and 2020, COVID of course hit the area, and boom, the park closed. 
This wasn't supposed to be permanent though, however satellite images confirmed its demolition in 2020, and the coaster and its park all seemingly disappeared. So all that said, it is sad to see the park go, but as far as everyone else is concerned, I think we can all agree it's a good thing this thing closed, and it's fun to talk about an urban legend now. I mean, what a weird history and design. Almost makes me want to write it and see what it would have felt like. Not really though. Quick end to a sad model, I guess. Anyways, if you did like the content, please like and subscribe per usual if you did enjoy it. That does help a lot, and it really helps me get motivated to produce more content, so if you could do that for a quick second, that'd be great. Besides that though, of course stay tuned for another video coming in a couple days, but until then, that's all I got for you guys in the current video, and we will see you all there. See ya!